Fuel subsidy is gone, but what is the economic impact of its removal on wages? That will be one of the things we'll be looking at on the show. As a growing need to secure ourselves and properties become a, an issue, we will be looking at securing our home with technology. We also will be looking at what the headlines are on of the press. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. It's always so uh, pleasant having you around and knowing that you are there for us as we are here for you. It's Plus TV Africa and it's a wonderful Tuesday morning and every Tuesday we look a little bit at technology also. Our theme for the day is innovation is our biggest asset in the fight against subsidy. We always are concerned about how you get to work every day when we get to the studio ourselves and we're wondering how the traffic situation is for you. A lot of people were hoping or were thinking rather, not, not hoping, were thinking that with the situation on ground, a lot of other people will stay back home, the cars on the road will be less and the traffic will not be that much. But if you know you're in Lagos, you have to think... <laughs> again because that nothing ever stops Lagosians from going to the road and uh, going about their normal businesses and so sometimes you go uh, and find out that the roads are clogged even with the fuel situation you ask yourself where have they been getting the fuel to be on the road all the time but well uh, be that as it may, uh, if you go to the last map page, uh, which, are, which is the body that monitors the, the traffic in Lagos State, you'll find out that some places are really good to move. Now, getting through uh, under mile 12 bridge inward, uh, Jello go in and out is good. Ascending and descending mile 12 bridge inward, Kosofe, down to Iano School is good. And return journey from Iano School uh, inward, Kosofe, down to mile 12 is good. You also find out that ascending and descending mile 12 bridge inward, Owode, led it down to Odeogo is good. It, well, on the way here this morning, I found out that from Bega, Ojodu Bega, to down to a co hotels, it was uh, very, very free. And if you're traveling, if you moved at the same time that I moved, I'm sure that you had a, a one very, very beautiful ride. There was no traffic on the road, very unusual. Uh, some people would say that it is expected, but um, yesterday, the situation we find today is all, is, was the same. And um, the traffic was not as good as today. Some people have said that because of this situation, when people get to the office on Monday, they choose not to go home until it's Friday, and then they enter the road to go back as weekend. So maybe every other office should also think seriously about um, making it comfortable for the people who work there to sleep over if they cannot be going to and fro every day to work so, so that when they close the work um, from duty as it were every day they can always find a place to lay their head and wake up in the morning so there should be a place to bathe there should be a place to lie down maybe you provide some mattresses and all that uh, you provide some sprays so that the mosquitoes do not give them uh, malaria uh, while they're trying to run away from transportation they begin to treat malaria and every other thing that they might need to stay back at the office and work till friday because the economy is really biting and anything that employers can do to make sure that employees are a little bit comfortable to do their work please should be done by the employers of labor it's not enough to just show that you're boss and then anybody who comes late to work, you fire the person. Anybody who does not show up for work, you fire the person, no matter what it is. And you have not even increased, um, um, what do we call it, salaries. And you're firing and hiring because you can't do that. And a lot of people are looking for work. I've heard a lot of employers say that if you leave, there are a thousand others looking for your job. And these are jobs that uh, you're paying maybe 30,000 or 40,000 naira and you're beating your chest and saying that you are doing poverty alleviation or something like that. It's not very good. 
you are an employer, you have your challenges, you have an employee, he has the, his challenges. Whatever you can do, let it not be said, it is because of what you do, did wrongly that the person and his family are suffering. Well, um, if you go to the social media, you will see a lot of things uh, today. Uh, one of the things that you will see is the fact that, or you go to the pages, it's not of the press yet, but um, it's good to know that some things are happening that may not be uh, one of the topics that we're talking about today. We do know that we've seen on uh, the national dailies that the NLC may have uh, uh, called off their strike, but the Nigerian Maritime Workers Union uh, just began their own strike. They have shut down seaports nationwide uh, because of that. So if the seaports have been shut down, it also means that the economy will be affected in a very, very negative way. Whatever their grievances may be, um, I hope that the relevant authorities are doing something. We've seen Joheshu and, and their, their, the other unions calling off their strike after meeting with the president. A lot of groups that have threatened to go on strike are meeting with the president and coming up with solutions uh, that are making them to call off their strikes. I do hope that the Nigerian Maritime Workers Union will also call off their strike because they have had the opportunity to meet with the president. If the president doesn't do anything else, at least being proactive enough to meet with the unions who are aggrieved is a very, very good sign. Uh, of a listening ear. We do hope that this listening ear will translate to uh, very, very positive actions on the part of the federal government. So Nigerian Maritime Workers Union begins strike, shuts down seaports nationwide, as we have already said. Then there is also very gladdening news. We do hope that um, uh, the whatever should be done to give legal backing to this next thing I'm going to say uh, will be done as fast as possible. Um, we have a Nigerian man who builds vehicles that are fuelless. So right now, um, you know, vehicles could be keke, could be <laughs> could be bike, but whatever it is, vehicles that do not need to use fuel. Please let's just uh, see this trending video right now. This guy is the Elon Musk of Nigeria and he's about to become a billionaire. He's turning vehicles that is fuel into vehicles that now operate only on electricity. Hi, my name is Tupia Mekaize and I turn vehicles that use fuel into vehicles that use only electricity and I believe this is the future. You believe you can make more than 20 billion naira from this? Yes. And this is your idea? Yes. Tell me how did this all begin? Well, it started from while I was still in the university. As an undergraduate, I was studying the works of Tesla and the vast um, transition into electric mobility globally. And then in my final year in the university, we had this project where, where the, a, a group of a team of engineering students we came together uh, under the tutelage of uh, Professor Zemanani, and then we built an electric vehicle from scratch. Then, so the Which university, the University of Nigeria, Ansuka. So the uh, kind of attention we got then kind of exposed me more into the potentials that lie ahead. And then I started seeing opportunities where um, young people who drive vehicles commercially can actually save costs in operation by um, using electric vehicles because they cost much, much less to operate and then much, much less to maintain. So how far have you come with this project? Well, so far we have successfully um, co com completed our kit, um, a kit that we can use to um, convert one vehicle that is powered by fuel gasoline engine to one that is powered by full, full um, battery electricity. How many of those vehicles do you have running in Enugu State at the moment? We currently have about five, and uh, we are working on our minibus model already. Okay, do you have investors at the moment? Yes, we have a number of investors, people who believed in us from the very beginning. Okay, and with the way we are going, do you think you'll be able to achieve the vision you have for this? Yes, very much. I work with a team of very visionary people who see the future of not just the renewable energy industry in the world, but the energy industry in Nigeria, particularly, and in the whole of Africa. We believe that this is a beginning of the transmission of Africa into a global economy. Oh, this is really impressive. Can you show us how this works? Yes. This is um, our, one of our vehicles, and then what you have here is the, the battery. The whole thing here is the battery. And then underneath it is the engine. 
So but then this is um, a test model. We could have our batteries under the seats of this vehicle. Can you put it on? Yes. One of the most obvious uh, advantages of this is it has absolutely no noise and absolutely no emissions. It doesn't have any combustion system. And Okay, well, that debunks all the, the notions that Nigerian universities are not training people to be self-reliant. They're just going there to do theoretical parts of it. Whoever wants to succeed, whoever wants to progress, will progress in the Nigerian university system or education system. You take what you get from the university and you translate that into a workable uh, model for you. This guy has done that. Uh, but my fear and the fear of a lot of Nigerians is whether he will be encouraged by our government and other investors uh, or he will be shot down. Will he thrive or he will fall into strife uh, or rive? Uh, we're, 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 we're talking, I'm talking about this because at one point, once upon a time, um, the National Assembly said nothing should be said in Nigeria about electric cars because we are people who produce fuel. Someone said that in the National Assembly, I don't want to call names, but uh, if you were listening to the news um, about a year ago, you may have heard someone in the National Assembly rising up to give a motion that people should not even, the National Assembly should not even consider discussing uh, electric cars because we as a country produce uh, oil. We produce crude oil, so we should not be thinking about electric cars. I don't know how that, uh, how that went for him. And right now, we're in this jam because of fuel subsidy removal. Our economy depends so much on fuel. Now we have an opportunity. We heard this kind of a story before now, how someone was converting uh, mini buses uh, in the north to buses that can run on electricity and all that. And we didn't hear anything about him anymore for a long time now. I think it's in Medugri that that happened. Now we've seen this one in Enugu State. And he was asked whether there were investors that are coming in. I wonder the kind of investors that were coming in. Maybe they were small scale and all that. I'm looking forward to a time maybe they would partner with big brands like Innocent Motors and any other uh, uh, car manufacturing brand that might spring up in Nigeria to produce this kind of things. So if he's in Enugu State, Innocent Motors is very close to him. So why can't there be some kind of collaboration so that we start producing our own electric cars here in Nigeria? The government should be proactive. So the new government that has come talked a lot about technology being a very integral part of our um, nationhood as it is. So I do hope that whoever is supposed to listen is listening now. Whoever is supposed to get this information has gotten it from the internet or from Plus TV today that we played it. To look for this guy, encourage talents like this so that technology will thrive in Nigeria. A lot of things that we depend on to uh, get our livelihood we may not need them in the nearest future. We should not be left behind. This is someone who has come up with something. So let's encourage him uh, the best we can as a nation and as individuals. So congratulations to you, my guy. University of Nigeria and Suka has produced something and someone really, really laudable. So it's still... Um, the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we're going to take a very short break, and when we return, we'll continue to talk about some of these things, and then also go to the newspapers to find out what is going on. Stay with us. <laughs>